In this video, you will learn Newton's third law and common misconceptions. We'll answer the following questions. What is Newton's third law? How do we identify action-reaction pairs? Do action-reaction forces cancel each other? When two objects collide, do bigger objects exert a greater force? And we'll also take a look at the classic horse and cart problem. As we answer these questions, we'll also be dealing with common misconceptions. What is Newton's third law? Newton's third law states that for every action force, there is an equal and opposite reaction force. The first question we want to ask ourselves is how do we identify action-reaction pairs? What we need to realize is that every force comes in pairs. And we want to be thinking about what are the two objects that are interacting with each other. Action-reaction forces will take the pattern of A pushes or pulls B and object B pushes or pulls A. So let's take a look at an example of a fist pushing a uh, punching a wall. So if the fist punching the wall is the action force, the reaction force is the wall pushing and exerting a force on the fist. That makes sense that the harder you punch a wall, the 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 hard the worse it's going to feel, uh, the more painful it's going to feel uh, on your fist. Here we have a swimmer pushing a uh, swimming, and uh, as she's as she's swimming, she's pushing water backwards, and the water is pushing the swimmer uh, forwards. And these forces are action-reaction pairs. They are in opposite directions, and they are equal in magnitude. Do action-reaction forces cancel each other? The answer is no, they don't cancel each other because they act on different objects. So let's use this hand holding an apple as an example. There are two forces acting on this apple. We have the gravitational force, the earth pulling the apple down, and also the force of the hand pushing the apple pushing the apple up. We're going to use the agent victim notation and uh, basically uh, to write that we're going to write what is pulling on the other object. So here we have the earth pulling on the apple so we're going to label that FEA and then we have the apple pulling up on the earth so apple pulling up on the FAE. Uh, the other force acting on the apple is the hand pushing the apple up and we'll call that hand pushing up on the apple. And then um, we'll also uh, draw the other uh, reaction force, which is the apple pushing down on the hand. And that's going to be F-A-H. Okay. Now, a way we can indicate action-reaction forces is through a dotted line. So I'm going to dot these two lines, and I'm going to dot these two lines. Okay, so the point here is that um, action reaction forces act on different objects so they can't cancel each other out. Now, is it true that the forces on this apple are balanced? Yes, that is true. However, those two forces acting on the apple are not action reaction forces, and I've shown you in the drawing here what the action reaction forces are. Now, someone might look at this and wonder um, does the apple actually pull up the earth uh, because if we were to let go of the apple we could see the apple fall but we don't really see the earth moving upward uh, so what's going on uh, well we need to think about Newton's second law uh, which says that the uh, net force net force uh, equals mass times acceleration uh, and we can rewrite this as acceleration is equal to the uh, F net divided by the mass. So greater the force, greater the acceleration, greater the mass, smaller the acceleration. So let's uh, think about uh, this gravitational force between the apple and the earth. Uh, so both will have the same force. So both will have the same force. We'll call that F. However, the apple has a much smaller mass. And so the apple will have a large acceleration. Uh, and the earth has a large mass and will have a 
very tiny uh, acceleration. And so is it true that the forces uh, of the earth pulling on the apple is equal to the force of the apple pulling on the earth? Yeah, it's true. Uh, however, the effect is going to be different because the uh, apple has much smaller mass. The effect on the apple will be much greater, large acceleration. The mass of the earth is huge, and so the effect on the earth is very small, very small acceleration. When two objects collide, do bigger objects exert a greater force? Um, the answer is no. The forces are going to be equal. So the big rig will exert the same force on the little car as the little car exerts a force on the on the big rig. Now someone might say, well, isn't the effect of this collision much greater on the smaller car? And the answer to that is yes. And we're going to show through Newton's second law why the effect is different even though the mass is the same. So once again, um, let's uh, use F to represent the force between these two um, cars, these two vehicles. Uh, the big rig has a very large mass and so it's going to have a very tiny acceleration uh, while the uh, little car will have a small mass and will have a very large acceleration. So here we're using Newton's second law, F equals ma or A equals F over M and we can see that even though the forces are the same, uh, because they have different masses they're going to have different acceleration. The object with a smaller mass will have a much larger acceleration. Here is the classic horse and cart problem. So we know that Newton's third law tells us that for every action force there is a equal and opposite reaction force, which means that the force of the horse pulling on the cart is equal to the force of the cart pulling on the horse. So the question is how can this uh, horse cart um, system ever move? And so the misconception here is that the forces are acting on the same object. And so first of all, we know that these forces are acting on different object. The other thing to realize is that there are other forces involved and uh, specifically uh, friction. So the horse is pushing the ground back and that might sound kind of weird, um, but when you are walking, you need to have traction. There needs to be friction between your shoe and the ground and as you push the ground back that ground is pushing you forward in this case the uh, ground is pushing the horse forward um, if the ground were slippery and the horse could not have make any traction have any friction with the ground uh, then yes this horse would have a really hard time moving forward so the key to understanding this classic problem is to understand first that the action reaction forces the horse on the car and the car on the horse those forces are on different objects and the second key to understanding this solution is that there are other forces involved uh, specifically the horse is pushing the ground back and the ground is pushing the horse forward